From the Arab revolutions to the Occupy movements, there has been an upsurge in popular protests around the world in the past couple of years. The nature of these protests has varied by country and context, but one striking feature has been the rise of new social movements, which are difficult to define and go against conventional forms of political engagement. Such movements are likely to pose significant challenges for governments in the years ahead. I'm Corley Zacchino, and joining me today is John Hoey, regional editor at the Economist Intelligence Unit. John, why are these protests happening now, and what are their drivers? In fact, protests have been building ahead of steam for some time, certainly in Europe in recent years, where we've had large-scale protests, governments have fallen, and so on. And the general backdrop, I would say, is the 2008-2009 financial and economic crisis um, and its aftermath. Uh, so we've had recession, slow growth, rising unemployment, rising social inequalities, rising poverty levels, and there's been a reaction against that. That's, so that's a more traditional type of, of, of social protest, social unrest that we've been seeing, not just in Europe, elsewhere as well, and that was a backdrop to some of the Middle East protests too. Um, but in and of itself, I don't think that is a sufficient explanation for the very diverse types of protests that we've seen and in different continents where there was a much faster recovery from the economic crisis, for example, in Latin America and Brazil, um, where actually you've had relatively fast growth and um, yet you've still had an upsurge of, of, of protests of what is uh, behind that and I think more broadly we have to look at the political dimension and by that I mean uh, a very widespread lack of trust and erosion of trust in political elites, uh, in institutions, political parties and so on and a very widespread sense of disappointment with democracy and so you have uh, middle classes in uh, emerging markets who are demanding something better from their elites and, if necessary, demanding regime change as well. How would you characterise the different types of protest? OK, we identify three types of protests. One broadly anti-authoritarian, pro-democracy, anti-regime, such as we've seen in the Middle East, also in other regions such as the Commonwealth of Independent States and Russia, uh, some in Africa. Second type we broadly call more traditional labour unrest, anti-austerity strikes, uh, protesting against um, crisis, unemployment and so on. Uh, also there I would include um, Latin America protests over natural resources, indigenous rights and the riots in the UK, Sweden and France. Finally, uh, more amorphous category of new social movements uh, which would include the indignados in Spain, uh, middle class protests demanding better services in Brazil, um, anti-regime, pro-democracy elements as well in Turkey, um, and the pirates movements in Germany and elsewhere. Do all these protests have anything in common? They do. On the surface they seem very different, but what they all share is um, diffuse, inchoate character, by which I mean an aversion really to articulating a political agenda. Um, they are lacking in ideology. There's also an aversion to traditional types of organisation, um, self-conscious rejection of traditional types of political organisation. Those are the main things they all share, whether that's the indignados in Spain or even some of the Middle East protests as well, which, whose failure to elucidate a clear political agenda uh, has resulted in political confusion and a situation where a pro-democracy movement ends up endorsing a military coup. Is the upsurge in protests likely to continue and what risks do you think this might pose to political stability? Yes, they're likely to continue, and I think this will be the background noise um, in many countries for, for some time to come, because the main drivers of the protests are unlikely to go away. So in Europe, for example, austerity is on the agenda for the foreseeable future, so we're going to have more reactions against that. Um, the demand for democracy is not going to go away in places where people don't have it. 
So even though we've got a sense of disappointment with democracy in the Western world, in the CIS states, in Russia, where people are living under authoritarian regimes, they're still going to be demanding um, something better. And uh, insofar as we have rising middle classes in Latin America, in Asia and elsewhere, they are going to be putting forward demands for better, something better, better services, better education, better health facilities, um, more rights, um, and demanding that elites take more notice uh, of what they want. So yes, we're going to see many more protests. Whether they're going to wreak havoc, as they did in the Middle East, whether they're going to be um, really seismic changes. Maybe there will be in the CIS uh, states, but in terms of these broader, more diffuse and inchoate social movements that we've discussed, I can't see them really challenging the status quo in a serious way. Thank you, Joan. You can find more in-depth analysis on these movements and protests in our special report called Rebels Without a Cause at www.eiu.com. Thank you and goodbye.